Hello, welcome. Good morning to Whole30 Day 3 and the continuation of my YouTube live series here on the Whole30 channel. Thanks for your patience. I had a little delay with my software, but that is okay. Uh, we are here. Let's see. Oh, that's strange. Hang on just a second. There we go. All right. Um, good morning. I'm going to wait for some people to join us and make sure that we are going live the way that we think we are going to. Um, but there we go. Oh, good morning. Okay. Hi. I had some technical difficulties with my software this morning, so it's nice to see you. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Uh, hope Whole30 Day 3 is going well for everybody. We're here to talk about how things are going, your NSVs so far. I want to follow up on the question from last from yesterday's YouTube Live, which is, are we asking ourselves, why am I crushing my Whole30 so hard? And what that brought up. Good morning, everybody. And oh, Kate's already saying pain levels are improving. I love to hear that, Kate. Feel free to say more. But, you know, I think non-scale victories on the Whole30 are so impactful for every single area of your life. I'll never forget the story from a, good morning, Kathleen. There was a story at a Whole30 Nutrition Seminar many, many years ago. I was giving a presentation and an older gentleman in the middle of the room raised his hand to ask a question and stood up. And he said that for the first time in his life, his knees didn't hurt. And he thought he would just have to live with that pain forever. He thought he was just destined to walk around with knee pain. He talked about how much he noticed now that his knees were feeling better, how his cravings also kind of disappeared and how much he had linked the foods that he was craving and the fact that he would use these foods as almost like support or comfort from the pain that he was experiencing. And he's like, my knees feel better. And now I've also noticed how often I used food to sort of numb the pain or comfort myself from the pain. And I no longer feel the need to do that either. So that was such a wonderful story that really touched my heart. And I'm so happy to hear, Kate, that your pain levels are improving. That makes me really happy. Good morning to everyone else. Oh man, I'm so sorry that you have been struggling that hard with your pain levels. I'm really glad that your Whole30 is bringing you some relief and we're only on day three, so it's only going to get better. That makes me really, really happy. Thank you so much for sharing us with us this morning. Kathleen is doing much better from yesterday. Yes. You know, it's miraculous sometimes, or it can feel miraculous how quickly the body shifts from I'm tired, I'm lethargic, I'm cranky, I've got a little bit of a headache, my energy levels aren't where they should be, I'm bloated to waking up one morning on the Whole30 and you're like, wow, all of that feels so much better. So I'm really happy to hear that. I love to see these non-scale victories. Good morning to Megan. Welcome to Whole30 Day 3. I love it. Let's see what everyone else is saying. Good morning. Somebody asked for drinks. Co oh, coconut limeade. Yeah, I think that was one of Vanessa's. Vanessa is our on our Whole30 HQ team and I think that Vanessa recommended a mocktail that involved co co uh, coconut and lime and maybe even some salt. And I'm really glad that you had that yesterday. It sounds really, really good. I am drinking my mud water this morning with some nut pods. And I also have, because I think the height of luxury is at least two or three beverages going at once. I also have my Whole30 approved lofty water. I was talking about this stuff yesterday. It is not carbonated and yet somehow it provides these low acid bubbles. They call it shimmering bubbles. So it doesn't have that bite of carbonation, but it is bubbly. It is flavored. It is delicious. Lofty Water is one of our newest Whole30 approved partners. So I've got a couple beverages going today. Yes, I'm really glad to hear it. Uh, Angela is feeling great. Sydney is, oh, Sydney's starting over today. Oh no, Sydney, what happened? You don't have to tell us. That's okay. Um, but it seems like maybe there was some kind of issue with an ingredient or something that was in something that you didn't anticipate and that stinks. But at least you're only on Whole30 Day 3. And if, you know, if you want to keep that Whole30 promise to yourself, if you made a commitment to eat Whole30 food for 30 straight days, then I don't want you to think of starting over as like a punishment or... 
it's essentially, I want to keep this commitment to myself. I want to see what it feels like to give myself a 30 day break from some of these foods that can be potentially maybe problematic. And I'm going to do a self experiment to see how they work for me. And I want to do the self experiment with 30 straight days. So if I include something that is meant to be eliminated during the elimination portion, I'm going to start over and I'm going to give my body those 30 days. I think that's a really nice way to think about it. Good morning, Serenity. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to the live. We've got them scheduled out. I'm scheduling them out like kind of three or four days at a time. And you can go to the Whole30 YouTube channel. Um, I want to make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel, please. And then after you subscribe, you can notify, request to be notified when these are going live. So I get a little pop-up notification that says, hey, Whole30, aka I, am going live in 30 minutes. And that can be a nice reminder as well. Tracy is saying, first Whole30, yesterday was tough, did not get myself prepared. Okay, yes, okay. So first of all, Tracy, don't panic. If you ate Whole30 food yesterday, you were supremely successful. Way to go. Could it have been less stressful? Probably. Could you have felt better prepared and more at ease with your meal plan? Sure, that's okay. But we have today to plan and prep, and we can give you as many tips as you need today. If you want help, drop specific comments in the chat for how to pull some simple ingredient meals off, how to create a Whole30 meal plan quickly, whether you're using one from the Whole30 book, whether you subscribe to Real Plans and let them do the meal planning for you. Maybe today you do a really simple meal one, eggs and whatever you happen to have on hand. Maybe you order a Chipotle salad bowl for lunch because that's easy, that can be delivered, you know it's Whole30 compatible. And that gives you basically the whole day to figure out what you're going to do for dinner. And then you pull the next couple days of meal plan together. But we've got you covered here, Tracy. Don't let this stress you out. I know probably it felt a little stressful and you say it went awfully yesterday. But if you ate Whole30 foods yesterday, it did not go awfully. You met your goal. You showed up. You were 100% Whole30 yesterday. So I think we should give you a high five for that because that absolutely counts. And that is your only goal, is to eat Whole30 compatible food for 30 straight days. So I think don't be so hard on yourself and use this opportunity to plan and pair, prepare, but I think you're doing well. Angela is feeling great. I love hearing that. Tracy said she's feel, Tracy is feeling better today. That's great. Corey is saying psoriasis is already clearing up and no afternoon crash. That's great. I love to hear that. I love to see skin improvements, whether it's eczema or acne or psoriasis or just your skin feeling like it's glowing a little more. It looks a little healthier. It's a little, a little more hydrated. I absolutely love hearing this. Sydney ate cheese. Yeah, that happens. I understand. Come back. Come back and do your 30 days with us. That's okay. You know, here's something I want to talk about, though. Very often, I'll get a DM from somebody who says, something happened yesterday and I'm going to start my whole 30 over. And I'm like, okay, what happened? And they'll say, I ate cheese. I had a glass of wine. I fill in blank here. And I'm like, okay, cool. But like, what happened? And I'm not talking about I ate cheese. I'm talking about what happened to get you to the place where you decided to have some cheese. Now look, eating cheese is like, totally morally neutral. If you want to have cheese, go ahead and have cheese. And Sydney, I think we talked about yesterday that you might not actually be doing a Whole30. You might just be working your food freedom plan. You might not need a Whole30 program as written by the rules. You just might need to tighten up your own whole, your own food freedom plan. So we talked about that. But in other contexts, when people say to me, I ate something that was off plan and I'm going to start my Whole30 over, I invite you to think about what specifically happened. What was your emotional state leading into that? What was the train of thought, your self-talk leading into that? What were the, you know, what was the stress that led to that decision? What was the emotional state that led to that decision? What, what happened? Like literally what happened when you were standing in front of the refrigerator and you had that block of cheese in your hand, what did you say to yourself? Did you say, ah, eh, like, screw it, I'm going to eat this and enjoy it? Or did you think to yourself, I probably won't be able to finish all 30 days anyway, because it seems kind of hard. So I might as well go out on my own terms, like a little bit of self-sabotage, because that happens. 
was it literally, I was not planned. Like I did not plan enough to have a good hearty whole 30 meal. And now I am so hungry that I cannot think of anything else other than just eating this block of cheese in my hand. What happened so that you can think about this? And if you do decide, look, I, I do want to keep my whole 30 commitment. That was a moment that happened. Totally understand. I have so much grace for myself. Also, no big deal. No, like there's no moral failing in choosing to eat cheese or having a glass of wine on your whole 30 or whatever. It's not a moral failing. It's just if this happened and I really do want to keep this commitment to myself, what happened so I can learn from that and make a plan so it doesn't happen again? If I find myself standing at the fridge so, so hungry because I haven't really thought about what I'm going to cook for dinner, then I'm going to pull up my app and I'm going to order a Chipotle salad bowl. And I'm going to tie myself over with like this handful of pistachios that I've got in my pantry, right? If I find myself really stressed out and scared that I'm not going to keep this whole 30 commitment to myself because I haven't yet bought into the idea maybe that I'm, that I'm worth keeping this promise to myself, that I can trust the signals that my body is sending me, that, that I can succeed with a promise that I make to myself. If that happens, then I'm going to call my best friend for a pep talk. I'm going to jump on whole 30 social media for some support and some encouragement and some advice. I'm going to journal how I feel and get it out on paper so it doesn't feel so scary. Think about the if and then make a plan for then so that you can learn from that experience. I mean, that's just like a really good, healthy life scale. Anytime you do something that you look back on and you think, "Mm, that didn't serve me as well as it could have. But especially on your whole 30, if there is something that you you know, maybe you see it coming on the horizon where you're like, oh man, I've been thinking about ordering pizza all day. And you suspect when you get home that that might be like your go-to because you've been talking yourself into it and thinking about it. And you really want to keep this promise to yourself. Think about what you could do between now and then to talk about how you're feeling and make a plan to stick to your whole 30. So there you go. Let's see how, uh, what else we're talking about in the comments here. Making it through your second day yesterday, dinner at your stepson's house. Yes, homemade mac and cheese, brought some chicken, stayed. Good job. I love that. As I said yesterday, I want you to be social on your whole 30. I want you to go to dinner. I want you to go to weddings. I want you to go to birthday parties. I want you to go to happy hours. It just requires a little planning and preparation. I was speaking, I was on a call this morning with the CEO of a sports drink company a sport water company. And he was like, you know, I'm doing the whole 30 again. I've been doing it every January for the last few years. I went to dinner last night and I just called the restaurant ahead of time. I looked at their menu, called the restaurant, asked a couple questions, walked in, did dinner, no problem. And I was like, amazing. That's how you do it. So stay social and also have a plan for what you're going to do if you are going out for dinner, if you are going to a wedding, if you are staying social. That's the best way, I think, to handle that. So fantastic, Kaylee. I like hearing that. Brenda is saying on day four, (laughs) I'm feeling all, kill all the things. Yes, that can happen. We're heading into day four and five, which according to the Whole30 timeline can mean kill all the things. Day three is still kind of a mixed bag. As we've seen, there are some folks who are like, I'm doing amazing. I feel great. I'm already seeing these really impactful non-scale victories. If that's not where you are today, If you are like, I'm still tired, I'm still feeling a lack of energy, I'm still feeling like ups and downs, I still have a bit of a headache, I'm still having cravings, that is also very normal. As we talk about in Whole30 Day by Day, day three, which starts on page 32, if you have your day by day journal, you can follow along. Like basically what you are experiencing is normal. Now there's a little list on page 33 Because sometimes people will say to me, "Um, okay, I'm on Whole30 day three and I have been like vomiting, um, you know, many times during the day. Like since I ate dinner, since I had, since I had whatever last night, I've been throwing up and I'm like, that's not normal. That is not a Whole30 side effect. You probably have the flu. You might have food poisoning, like something's going on. Go talk to your doctor right away. So there's a list in Whole30 day by day of what is normal and what isn't normal. If you wake up on Whole30 day three and you find that like you have very little range of motion in your shoulder, it's probably not the Whole30. Maybe you did something at the gym. Maybe you slept on it funny. So I do want you to kind of go through that list of like, is this normal? But 
normal things on day three include some digestive distress. Your digestion may get worse before it gets better. On my first Whole30 back in 2009, I experienced a lot of digestive distress. Things moved way too fast for a really long time until it evened out. And it was just my gut microbiome kind of realigning. And it did take a while and it took some probiotic supplementation to help. But I was eating before my Whole30, I was eating a ton of low-fat dairy, which I now have discovered like does not agree with me super well. I was eating a lot of whole grains, which also gluten grains sometimes don't sit with me well. So it was a big shift for me. So you can experience some digestive distress on day three. Fatigue, headache, sleepiness, fogginess, crankiness, cravings, all of those things can be normal as well. Breakouts can be normal at this point in the Whole30. And then if you have a chronic health condition or an autoimmune condition, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, you know, ulcerative colitis, any autoimmune condition, then you may notice that your symptoms, again, get worse before they get better. With autoimmune conditions in particular, it can take longer than 30 days to see the full benefits of removing some of these potentially problematic foods from your diet. So if you're on day three and you're like, I still have joint pain and swelling, or my digestion is still not feeling great, or my skin hasn't started clearing up yet, that's okay. We're not panicking. We're only on day three. There's a reason it's called the whole 30 and not the whole three or the whole seven or the whole 10. We really do need to allow 30 days for you to have a good solid baseline to evaluate how these foods or the absence of these foods in particular during elimination are or are not affecting aspects of your health, whether that's your energy, your sleep, your mood, your focus, your digestion, your cravings, your joint pain and swelling, acne, allergies, asthma, migraines, anxiety, the list goes on. And you should be able to get some sense of a trend during elimination and then especially during reintroduction, which we'll talk about later on in the book club. So I think that was, Brenda, a wonderful invitation to talk about what is and is not normal at Whole30 day three, and that not everyone is going to be, uh, you know, on the exact same path at the same time, and that is a-okay. Julie is talking about going to a gathering on Sunday, vegetarians and omnivores, someone's making veggie chili with beans, recipe ideas I could bring to share. This would be a wonderful place for you watching to share some of your favorite recipes with Julie. So if you know that there will be some vegetarians and some omnivores, I don't think you need to bring one dish for each. I think you can probably just pick a dish to cater to a specific group, or maybe you could bring something like a side dish that could apply to both. But I think about the idea of, let me think. So a, a frittata, is something really great to go to bring to a gathering. You don't say whether the gathering is in the morning or like daytime or evening. So that might impact this. But I'm thinking about things like, I don't know, wings with a Whole30 ranch and some vegetables as a side to dip. That's something that kind of everybody could pick at as they choose. Um, but if you have a favorite recipe and you're watching and you want to share that with Julie for suggestions... I think that would be the perfect place to do it. Julie's saying maybe thinking bringing a salad or stuffed mushrooms. That sounds good. I will tell you one crowd-pleasing appetizer that I have brought to basically every gathering. Michelle Tam of Nom Nom Paleo has a recipe called, I think it's called Devils on Horseback. It's dates stuffed with either a cashew, like a homemade cashew cheese, which is like blending cashews in a blender together until they get creamy. Or you can use a Kite Hill compatible cream cheese. And you can stuff it also with like an almond or um, some kind of a nut. Usually I use a Marcona almond. Those are very fancy. Uh, you could also, if you wanted to, leave some just like that. So it's a date stuffed with a little bit of Kite Hill cream cheese and um, a Marcona, Marcona almond, or you could take that same thing and for half the batch, you could wrap them in a no sugar bacon and throw them in the oven until the bacon gets a little bit crispy. So that's one dish that you could make that like would appeal to both crowds. But let me tell you, those things go like hotcakes. They are absolutely delicious. And because you're at a buffet, 
you know, people would pick and have one or two of them. I also want to make sure that you have a dish that you can eat. So if you want to bring a side dish, make sure you have some kind of protein at least that you can eat while you're there. So whether that's a Whole30 chili, whether that's some wings, whether it's some shredded pork that you bring and people can kind of make their own like lettuce wraps or carnitas, make sure you have something to eat for sure that you bring yourself so that if nothing else is compatible, which I would find hard to believe, but you never know, you at least have a good meal there. So I think that is a great idea. Jill is saying that you did not get your food ordered in time. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, listen, we're going to be doing these lives every single day. And if you didn't start with us on the second, no big deal. You're only going to be a few days behind. And you can still come and check in and ask questions. And, you know, there's no, there's not such a significant difference between someone on day five and someone on day seven that you're going to be completely lost in the discussion. And you're going to get a preview of some of the things to come. So I don't think that's a big deal at all. And I think you can absolutely still join us. Hi, Betsy. It's so good to see you here. Good job. Let's see. Tracy is saying that Tracy is not eating as much as you should. So this is really common. I talked about this a bit yesterday. On the Whole30, especially if you're new to the program, it's very common to underserve yourself for a number of reasons. Number one, we may be coming into the program with this concept or idea that fat is bad, carbs are bad, um, fruit is bad, right? We may be coming in a little phobic of some of these ingredients. And so when we're preparing our plates, we've got protein, we've got a lot of leafy vegetables, but not a lot of carbohydrate dense vegetables. There maybe isn't a lot of fruit. And then maybe we're skimping on the fat a little bit because we have some kind of old ideas about the role of fat in a healthy diet. That can be very common. So what I'd want you to do is go back to our meal template, which is available for free on our website. Maybe somebody from the Whole30 team can link it down below and make sure that you're using our meal template as your minimum. It's a, it's a place for you to get started with how big you should make your meals. One to two palm-sized servings of protein. For most people, it's like three to five ounces of protein. That should be your minimum. So if you're making breakfast for eggs, or if you're making eggs for breakfast, you need to eat at least like two or three eggs or two eggs plus another protein source, right? One egg is not gonna cut it for a grown person. Then you wanna fill your plate with vegetables, but it's not just the nutrient-dense, carbohydrate-light de vegetables. Yes, go ahead, eat spinach and broccoli and cauliflower and tomatoes and mushrooms and zucchini, all of those, those are delicious, but throw some potatoes in, throw some sweet potato, throw some butternut squash, or acorn, or acorn squash or beets. We want to make sure that you're getting a good amount of vegetables and not just the carb light stuff. Do not be afraid of carbohydrates on the Whole30. It's coming from real whole food. Add some fruit. You can add fruit to every single meal if you want to. And if you love fruit, I want you to do that. You can add it to your meal, like sprinkling some berries on your salad or adding some you know, chopped pineapple to your lettuce wrapped tacos. You can do fruit as part of your mini meal in between, but don't be afraid of fruit. And then I want you to use our fat requirements as the minimum guide to added fat for each meal. So you'll see we have a few different pairings. It's like a closed fistful of nuts and seeds, an open handful of olives or coconut flakes, one to two thumbs or tablespoons of a cooking oil in the pan, feel free to mix and match. That should be your minimum in terms of what you are eating. If you are active, if you are an athlete, if you have very long days, if you just have higher calorie needs for whatever reason, you may need to throw a fourth meal in there. You might need to have a mini meal in between where it's like, oh, lunch and dinner is so far apart. I need something in between. Please do that. And then as your Whole30 goes on, you'll be able to use your own body's cues to dictate how big to make your meal. So if you make your breakfast and it's two eggs an avocado, you know, half an avocado, a side of berries, and maybe some spinach. And then by 11 a.m., you know, just a couple hours later, you are ravenous for lunch. That could be a sign, okay, I need to add more to my breakfast. I'm gonna throw one more egg in. I'm gonna throw two of Applegate's no sugar breakfast sausages. I'm gonna add more fat. 
So maybe instead of a quarter of an avocado, I'm going to bump it up to a half an avocado, or I'm going to use more oil in the pan when I cook my eggs, and I'm going to not leave the oil in the pan. I'm going to make sure that it's all, you know, nice and, and a good fat-fueled meal, and see if that tides you over until lunch. So that's how we want you to start with the meal template, but always use your body's own signals to dictate how much you should be eating. It's also common on the Whole30 to feel like you are overeating because this is all real whole nutrient dense food and it can be really satiating. So for some people, they come into the program and they're like, oh my gosh, I ate breakfast and I'm still so full when it's time for lunch. That's okay. You can make your lunch a little bit smaller. You can maybe make your breakfast a little bit smaller if needed. But I would say at as long as your minimum is the meal template and you don't go below that, just give it a couple days to give your body a few days to adjust because if you are coming from food that is nutrient light but calorie rich, like a standard American diet with, you know, chips and junk food and soda and stuff like that and you're coming to a whole 30 which is a lot of real whole nutrient dense food with protein and fat and fiber and micronutrients that signals satiety from the stomach to the brain, then You might be feeling like you're eating a lot of food, but in reality, you might just be properly nourishing yourself for the first time in a long time. So use our meal template, stick with it, give it a week or two, and really continue to lean into those signals your body is sending you. It's one of the reasons that we recommend that, especially in the beginning, I would love for you to eat your meals in a relatively relaxed fashion, sitting at an actual table. It would be great if you weren't trying to eat your meal in the car or eating it while you work, because what happens when we do that is we're not paying attention to the signals our body is sending us. And we may not even be like chewing well. We may not be taking our time with our meals and you can gulp down a whole bunch of food before your body gets the signal that like, oh wow, this was a good amount of food. I'm nourished. There's a lot of micronutrients in there. So if you have capacity, sit down at a table with your meal, eat in a relatively leisurely undistracted fashion, uh, fashion, check in with yourself when you're done with your meal or when you start to get that sensation of fullness, give yourself a minute or two and say, okay, I'm, I think I'm feeling full. Let me sit for a minute and see how that lands. If I still want to eat more, I'm going to go ahead and eat more. Or if you get done with your plate and you're still hungry, okay, I'm going to sit for a minute or two and see how this feels in case the sensation of fullness just needs to catch up with me. And if after a minute or two, I decide I'm still hungry, go eat more. Absolutely. This program helps you restore trust in the signals that your body is sending you and reconnects yourself with your body signals in a really beautiful way that many of us pre whole 30 haven't experienced in a long time, myself included. So I want you to give yourself the space to really listen and tune in and to trust the signals that your body is sending you because your body knows better than any calculator on the internet how much you should be eating to thrive. So hopefully you found that helpful. I think I have missed probably a ton of questions. Let's see where we are. Severe leg pain, Lisa. That's a tough one. So it could be the result of muscle cramping from electrolyte deficiency, particularly magnesium deficiency. I don't know if what you were eating before perhaps and what you're eating now is so remarkably different, or it could be perhaps a change of sodium in your diet in that if before Whole30 you were eating a lot of foods that had a lot of sodium because they were processed foods, and now you're eating Whole30 and you're not adding salt to meals and you're not salting your recipes as much and you're not eating as many processed foods by nature of the program, that could be contributing to leg cramps, or it could be something else. You're saying leg pain and not necessarily leg cramps, which does concern me a bit more, As always, if you have any worries whatsoever, check with your doctor. Before you send us a message on social media, check with your healthcare provider. Describe the symptoms. Maybe it's something that has nothing to do with Whole30. Maybe it's a physical therapy-related issue, or maybe it's a nerve-related issue or a back issue. I don't know. I can't diagnose that for you. I couldn't diagnose that period because I'm not a doctor or physical therapist. So, If it is a leg cramp situation and you're noticing that you're having some cramps, make sure that you're getting enough sodium in your diet. You may want to consider a magnesium supplement, a magnesium glycinate, um, or even a citrate form like in Natural Calm, the unflavored Natural Calm. That could be helpful, but check with your doctor. That is always the recommendation that I would make just to make sure that you get the specialized advice that you deserve during your Whole30. 
Uh, Caroline is saying yesterday was great, more energy than usual. Yeah, okay. So it's very common to have ups and downs here. Yesterday, you may have felt more energetic for a number of reasons. Maybe you ate more. Maybe you slept better the night before. Maybe just the general energy of it being day two on the whole 30, like really kept you motivated and that motivation to you translated to energy. And then today, you know, you're on day three. Like we're going to notice as we slide into days 10 and 11 that it's this in-between period where you're like, I feel like I've been on this program long enough that I should be seeing results. And maybe you probably are, but maybe you're looking for results that are more specific that haven't yet occurred. And it's like early enough in the program that those haven't occurred. And that's why we say days 10 to 11 are sort of the hardest days and the days when most people decide to quit their Whole30 if they are going to. So I'm going to help you with a Dear Melissa newsletter that I think is running tomorrow about motivation on the Whole30. I wrote it just a few days ago for issues just like this. People saying, I'm on day three, I'm on day four, and I notice I'm not as motivated as I was on day one. What do I do about that? I have a very specific prescription for you tomorrow in Whole30's Dear Melissa newsletter. You can subscribe at whole30.com slash wholesome. If you're already a subscriber, you'll get it in your inbox tomorrow. But I think you will all find it really helpful because it is based very firmly in habit research. So, and of course, my 13 years of experience helping people through the Whole30. So look for that in your inbox tomorrow. This Caroline is saying no cravings, huge NSV. I love that for you. No cravings means you're well-fed, you're well-nourished, you're not feeling denied or deprived, you're happy with the food that you're eating. I think that is absolutely wonderful. Kara, oh, thanks, Kara. That's really nice. Um, 15th Whole30, I love that you keep coming back. Kara, I always ask when people come back to do multiple Whole30s, what brings you back? Share with us in comments, what brings you back to the Whole30? Is it the sense of community? Is it the idea of like belonging to something bigger than yourself, you know, and, and doing, recommitting to a health effort along with a big group of people where you feel this sense of camaraderie? Is it just that, you know, Whole30 helps you feel your best and you love coming back to the reset and it just feels so easy and effortless at this point that you've made it a normal part of your practice? I would love to hear what keeps you coming back. I'm so happy that you're back with us for this time and that you love day by day. Um, I do think that this little journal is magical for accountability, for motivation, for advice. The specificity of the tips that I offer for every single day in this book, people have said to me, like, how do you know? How do you know? How are you so in my head that this is exactly what I was thinking? And the answer is that I've just been doing this for a really long time. I've been helping people through the Whole30 for a very long time. And when you do that, you spot patterns and habits. And no two people's Whole30 is exactly the same. But there's a really good chance if you tell me what day you're on, I can tell you at least a good chunk of what you're going through and what you're feeling. And I can give you the specific advice that you need for that day. And that's exactly what this YouTube series and this book club is all about. So thank you so much. Let's see. Elizabeth is saying missed breakfast because it was one of those mornings. But you prepped and left some breakfast for Tata things. Yes. Good for you. I love that. See, I have said all along in the series, you there is no such thing as being too prepared for the Whole30. That does not exist. It does not exist because if you are super prepared, and I don't mean in a really stressed out, anxious way. I just mean, hey, I've thought about my week. I've thought about my day. I've thought about the stressful things I might encounter. Um, I've got a few things of emergency food stashed. I feel pretty confident that no matter what life throws at me, I've got some kind of plan for it. Even if it's not the perfect plan, it's good enough. You will literally trip through your whole 30. You'll just slide on through it. It will be like a water slide where you're like, all right, this feels good. This feels easy. Oh, this came up. No big deal. I have an if then plan for that. This came up. No problem. I've got a meat stick stashed here. Breakfast was one of these mornings. No big deal. I've got a frittata stashed at the office. I can hang on for another hour until I get there and then I'm going to eat my first meal of the day. So absolutely brilliant. Bravo. This is how you do it. Plan and prepare is key on the Whole30. I absolutely love that. 
Meredith is noticing how many times you're on autopilot. If you have kids, as I do, I have a nine-year-old son, let me tell you, the automatically reaching to eat whatever I am serving my son or finishing whatever is on his plate that he has not eaten, it's real. It is real. And even if you don't have kids, I think it's an automatic like, oh, I'm in the kitchen. This sounds good. Or, oh, I'm in the kitchen. I'm going to pull open the pantry just to see what's in there. And then it's like, wait a minute, am I even hungry? What am I even looking for? I don't know. I just found myself standing in front of the pantry. I think the awareness of that is another non-scale victory. The fact that you are noticing how often you're on autopilot is a huge non-scale victory. The first step to changing a behavior, if you want to change it, is being aware that there's behavior in the first place. And I remember doing the Whole30 last, I think I did our Whole30 at home in April 2020, and like found myself with my kids' Applegate gluten-free chicken nugget like halfway to my mouth. And I was like, oh, I'm on the Whole30. I'm not eating this right now. But it was an automated behavior. So yes, I think the awareness of that is huge. I think it can be really helpful if you notice yourself in the pantry, just standing there without something specific in mind to go, again, what happened? How did I end up here? Is it time of day? Because habits can absolutely be tied to times of day. It's like 2 p.m., I'm gonna prowl through the pantry, or it's 8 p.m., I'm gonna prowl through the pantry. Is it my emotional state? Is it the action I just took before where it's like every time I come into the kitchen to grab something, I wander over to the pantry? Thinking about what happened and what brought you there can also be really helpful. Like, oh, I noticed I'm bored again and I automatically gravitated to the pantry. Okay, what else can I do if I'm bored? What can I do? And then maybe you make a list. Maybe you have an adult coloring book. Maybe you have a journal. Maybe you have a book handy and you're like, I'm gonna, next time I feel like I've got five minutes of downtime and I don't know what to do, I'm gonna read five pages of my book. I'm gonna listen to a couple minutes of the latest podcast that I've got queued up. I'm gonna write a card or send a text or whatever, but coming up with a list of things that you can do instead of wandering over to the pantry can also be really helpful. That was one of the biggest benefits of my very first Tool 30 is I realized in April 2009, I didn't have another coping mechanism for stressful feelings, discomfort, anxiety, loneliness. I only used food and drink. And it wasn't that I was drinking tons of alcohol or eating tons of junk food, but the point was that when I was bored, lonely, or anxious, I reached for food. And during that first Whole30, I developed so many other coping mechanisms. So I think that's a huge benefit. The fact that you're aware of it is absolutely wonderful. And now we're going to get back to the question I asked you yesterday. Lisa said you found it helpful. Why are you crushing the Whole30? I absolutely love that you found that helpful. You feel like you have an unhealthy relationship with food and you want to change it into something that is life giving and not draining. That is absolutely beautiful. Yesterday, we talked about the prompt of asking yourself, why? Why am I so successful with this Whole30? Why am I rocking my Whole30 so hard? Why am I crushing this Whole30? When you pose the question to yourself like that, the brain will automatically seek evidence to support that hypothesis. It is confirmation bias put to work in a positive way for us. And Lisa is realizing, why am I crushing it? It's because I want my relationship with food to be different. And I'm already doing that. You are already doing that because you are on day three of the Whole30. It's happening. You are already changing your relationship with food. It's going. So I think that is absolutely wonderful. And I am so happy that you have observed that. We've got a lot of questions that I'm missing. I'm so grateful to my Whole30 team for jumping in and answering those. Julie wants to know, is restless or disruptive sleep normal during the last few days, uh, during the first few days? Yes, absolutely. I remember my first Whole30, my sleep getting worse before it got better. And it got worse in like a weird way where I found that I started waking up. Instead of waking up and sleeping until like seven, I would wake up at six. And I was like, okay, that's not a big deal. I'm waking up an hour earlier. And then I would wake up at five. And they'd be like, okay, this is problematic. Why am I wide awake at five? And then I woke up at four. And it was obvious that something was happening with my hormones and stress levels and cortisol levels. And it eventually evened out. It did. I just kept doing what I was doing, eating Whole30 food, prioritizing sleep, prioritizing healthy movement because I had an established exercise routine at that point. 
But yes, it is normal for sleep to be disruptive. A few things that you can do as part of your sleep hygiene routine if you want to work on it, because I'm a huge fan of sleep and I am a very good sleeper in general. My whoop tells me my sleep scores are off the charts. A few things you want to do, ideally stop eating a few hours before you go to bed. Digestion is very hard work on the body. And when we are resting, we don't want the body to have to do hard work. We want it to do all of the things it needs to do to repair and replenish us as we sleep. So eating too close to bed can disrupt that process. So if at all possible, you are going to stop eating a couple hours before bed. If you go to bed at 10, maybe you stop eating by like 7.30. That would be ideal. You can also try a magnesium supplement. So a magnesium supplement like magnesium citrate that you find in natural calm or magnesium pills. I take a supplement called Magteen. You can find a magnesium glycinate powder, although the unflavored doesn't taste the best, but natural calm I find quite good. That can also help you with sleep mixed into water taken right before bed. And then it's the usual, right? You want to turn off screens at least an hour before bed. We're not like we should not be checking email from bed. We should not be like scrolling TikTok from bed if we want to get a really good night's sleep. Keep the lights dim, blackout curtains, cool bedroom, or you're using like your, you know, Uller chilly sleep system. Like I have the water cooled mattress topper to keep you cool. These are all things that can be really helpful in good sleep hygiene, but yes, it's very normal to have sleep be somewhat disrupted during the early stages of your Whole30. Very normal. Stick with it and see if sleep improves, because I'm betting that it would. Coralie's wondering, substitute for cheese for cauliflower nachos. Oh man, I'm so behind in questions. Maybe this one was answered, Um, but I think you could probably do You could make your own like cashew crema, so it would be cheesy or like creamy, but it wouldn't be melted like cheese. I think that could work really well. You could also do like a Kite Hill cream cheese. We also have Primal Kitchen makes a Whole30 approved queso dip. Now that I think about it, that we have in our fridge that is absolutely delicious and you can heat it up and that would make a wonderful substitute for nachos. That's it. I just answered that for you, hands down. I'm going to head down to the bottom of questions and make sure I am keeping up. If you have any questions towards the top that I haven't answered and you wanted me to answer them, I will. Brenda's talking about gum chewing. So we have an article on the Whole30 website. Maybe someone on the HQ team can Google it for me, but it's fresh breath strategies on the Whole30. There are plenty of things that you can do instead of chewing gum to keep your breath fresh on the Whole30. Some of them include like drops. Some of them are rinses that are Whole30 compatible. You can always pack a little toothbrush with you and give yourself a little toothbrush. You can chew on maybe some different kinds of seeds that can be really helpful. There are some like the peppermint drops I really like. So we do have a bunch of strategies. Dried mango. I mean, yeah, you could have a piece of dried mango if you really wanted to. If you don't love the idea of needing something sweet after every single meal, maybe you could use one of our other strategies. Um, Anything that's like a peppermint flavor is a very good palate cleanser. So maybe it's even like a mug of peppermint tea after a meal. That could be really, really helpful. Uh, Let's see. We thought we were well prepared. Oh, (laughs) those onions. I mean, I don't know when I get angrier or like more frustrated than when I make a huge delicious whole 30 meal. And I think it's going to last us like two or three days. And my husband comes home from jujitsu and he's extra hungry. And like that meal is gone in one serving. So if you make your own stuff for the whole 30 and then it turns out it's so delicious, the whole family wants it. Yeah. I would go ahead and double the batch. Terry Turner's magical elixirs are incredible. Those onions, like you're just going to want to do two or three at a time. Absolutely. I made some pickled cabbage not that long ago and I made what I thought was a huge jar of it and we ate it in one serving in our tacos. So yes, I think you're going to need to eat more. I think that is great. Oh, here's Serenity back with why you've done so many Whole30s. I'm so thrilled that you come back when you're feeling overwhelmed. I love that. Whole30 for so many people is such a grounding practice. It's so grounding. It's so soothing. You know it works so well. You know it's easy because you've done it before. And eating Whole30 compatible foods just feels pretty effortless at this point. You know it's going to help you feel your best. 
it is, especially in times of stress, when we feel like there's so much in our life that we can't control, I've heard of people doing the Whole30 specifically in periods of grief, in periods of divorce, in preparation for a new baby, in the middle of a move. I heard from at least two people who were in terrible, their homes were, had a, had a fire. They were, they had home fires and had to like relocate. And in the midst of that loss and grief, they did a whole 30 because they found it such a grounding practice. So I think that's a wonderful reason for coming back. Um, and I'm glad you're back with us now in your first program since early 2020. That is wonderful. Nora is here from Berlin. I haven't been in Berlin since, oh boy, 2013. I was there. Absolutely loved your city. Biked around like crazy. Ate delicious food. Went and saw a bunch of historical sites. I loved Berlin. Um, And you are definitely, yes, I understand. Cooking things from scratch. If you are in other countries, we don't have Whole30 approved products outside of the U.S., And the answer, the reason, it's not that we wouldn't want to. I don't know the first thing about food brands in Germany or Norway or Brazil or other countries that people watch us from, even the UK. And the last time I was in the UK and scoured the grocery store, I realized that you, you in the UK, they were like five years behind where the US was in terms of you know, conscientiously not adding sugar to products, conscientiously making products gluten-free. Granted, this was many years ago, but I didn't find anywhere near as many Whole30 compatible products in the grocery store as I would here at any local grocery store because we're a U.S. brand. So I wish that I had more advice or more support for somebody in other countries. But when you are doing the Whole30 in another country, it's kind of like when we were doing it back in 2009. We're like, yeah, we were making things from scratch. We were making our own bone broth. We were making our own mayo. I would say just continue to keep it simple. Use condiments like hot sauce, mustards, salsas, guacamoles that are very often compatible. It's usually pretty simple to find a salsa that doesn't have added sugar or a hot sauce that doesn't have added sugar. So you may need to keep them a little more simple. If you are making your own dressings from scratch or sauces from scratch, you know, go ahead and double up or triple up so that you've got plenty to make. And then just focus on ingredient meals. I've got another email series coming out starting next week about my ingredient templates, how to put ingredients together in a way that's perfectly Whole30 compatible, super delicious, but also keeps meal planning really, really simple. So I think you will find that helpful as well. So hopefully that helps. Uh, Yeah, nothing in France. I know. I understand. I mean, again, I'll have people who will email me from like Brazil and they're like, hey, do you have any Whole30 approved mustards in Brazil? And I'm like, I've never been to Brazil. I've never been to a grocery store in Brazil. I don't know anything about the brands in Brazil, unfortunately. So until we can grow a bigger presence in some of those countries, which believe me, I would absolutely love to do. uh, Unfortunately, we're not able to help provide guidance towards compatible products in countries where we don't live. It's just hard. It's hard for us here in the U.S. to know what is going on in other places. Jenny is saying, going to an event where there'll be drinks and food, suggestions to stay committed. I love this. I love that you're going to the event. I don't know what kind of event it is, but I'm assuming... Let's just say um, there's going to be lots of food there, and maybe it's like a football game or something like that, or I'm assuming it's not like a formal dinner party where you're going to have to scope out the menu. A couple things that you can do. Make sure you have a really good meal before you go. Hands down, don't show up to these things super raging hungry because there's a really good chance that your hunger and temptation is going to win out. So just make sure you're really well fed before you go. Always have emergency food on you. Always, always throw an Epic bar, an RX bar, a package of plain pistachios or a jar of karma nuts in your purse or in your bag or whatever you're bringing with you. And just make sure you always have something to eat so that if you're at this event and yeah, there's food and drink and you've got your sparkling water and that's fine and you get hungry, you can duck out and grab a little snack to tide you over until it's time to go. You can always call ahead of time. I don't know what kind of event it is, but sometimes maybe you call ahead of time and You ask the caterer or the host, like, hey, what will there be? What will they be serving? I have these dietary restrictions. 
maybe you can offer to bring something yourself. Again, not knowing what kind of event it is. If you're meeting friends for tailgating, bring your own Applegate hot dogs and your own sweet potato spears that you can just throw on the grill and you know, your own carrots and guacamole to dip and your own huge mug of bone broth and you're good to go. So just think about the kind of event, the kind of stressors that you may encounter at that event and create an if-then plan. If I get there and I realize there's nothing there for me to eat, then I won't stress because I know I have my Whole30 emergency food with me and if I need to like sneak off and have a meat stick, I will absolutely do that. So I think that will help you stay compatible throughout your Whole30 journey. Let's go back to some other questions. Um, and you can feel free to drop anything that I have missed in the chat. We're, we're talking about, we're back to talking about our kids licking the knife, licking the spoon after you make the PB&J. Yes. It, the habit is just so strong when you have kids to like clean up after their stuff. Cause I don't think my son ever takes the last bite of anything. I wonder where he got that from. Anyway, let's go back to Whole30 day by day. We have talked about, is this normal or is this not normal? We've talked about lethargy, crankiness. Let's talk for a brief minute about whether or not you may be trying to do too much during your Whole30. If this is your first Whole30, or if you haven't done the Whole30 in a while, coming back to the program or coming to the program for the first time can be intense. It requires a lot of energetic expenditure to read the rules, to read your labels, to meal prep, to plan, to think about emergency food. And then if you're experiencing some you know, tiredness or lack of energy or crankiness, that's a lot. Sometimes what I see is people who start the Whole30, especially in January, they have started with like eight New Year's resolutions. I'm going to do these eight things. I'm going to do the Whole30 and I'm going to start exercising and I'm going to start taking cold showers and I'm going to start journaling and I'm going to X, Y, Z. And maybe you're cranky and tired and feeling demotivated because you're trying to do too much. So here's my general recommendation. When you're doing a self-experiment, any self-experiment, just do one at a time. Just focus on one at a time. If you're here, I assume it's because you're doing the Whole30. So just do the Whole30. Let the Whole30 be your self-experiment for the month. If you already have an established exercise routine, you're coming into the Whole30 and you're new to the program, but you've been exercising three or four mornings a week for the last year or two, that feels pretty automatic, go ahead and keep that up. But now is not the time to take on new programming, to try to train for a new race that you've never run before, to try to set a PR in the gym. Your primary focus is the Whole30 and should be the Whole30. Keep your exercise routine on autopilot, but if you notice that you feel like you're kind of burning the candle at both ends, take a half intensity week. Focus on mobility this week. Maybe you take a couple extra days off and you just walk instead because walking counts as exercise, but make Whole30 your primary focus so that you don't get too burned out trying to do too many things at once and then nothing gets done well. The brain does not like ask, being asked to prioritize multiple goals at the same time and tends to practice, tends to do this like goal switching behavior where it's like it will focus on one for a little while, then get distracted and focus on something else, then realize that that first thing isn't actually coming along as well as they had hoped and they, like it's your brain. And because that first thing you're not noticing that you're making as much progress as you wanted to, you'll say, well, that's not working. I'm going to give it up. New Year's resolutions, especially if you're making a bunch of them all at once, they're really hard to manage and they're very hard to do more than one at, at a time effectively. So just focus on your whole 30. That is your primary job. Anything else you can organically add in if and when you feel like you have energetic capacity for it. It's totally normal for people to get into the third week of the whole 30 and go, I have a ton of energy. I feel so good. I'm sleeping better. My energy is great. I think I'm going to go for a walk today. I think I'm going to do a yoga class tonight. I think I'm going to get up early tomorrow and go to the gym. That organically happens, but I don't want you to force it because I do want you to prioritize your Whole30 journey and your Whole30 experience and all of those non-scale victories. So if you notice that you're tired, you're cranky, you're lethargic, could just be, you know, that, that path, that point of where you are in your Whole30, but it also could be are you doing too much? 
And could you do less to gain more? When I talked to my community on Substack about New Year's resolutions or New Year's goals or self-experiments, the idea of doing less came up a lot. A lot of people said, I'm going to do less. I'm going to focus on just one thing at a time. Or I'm going to hedgehog and really make self-care my priority. Or I'm going to learn to say no a lot more. Or I am going to reject hustle culture. Or I'm going to reject the idea that like, I always need to be working out 100%, 100% of the time. Doing less is a trend. It is a theme. And I'm all about it. I'm all here for it. I started doing that in May of last year. I wrote about it in XOMU. Everything got better when I started doing less and started being more intentional about what I was doing. So all of that to say, if you are tired, cranky, lethargic, ask yourself, could you do a little bit less? Uh, Emily said you did a little yoga. Yeah, yoga this morning and that was a hard workout for day three. Yes. It is very normal if you have an an exercise practice already established for you to notice in work one, in week one of the whole 30, that things just feel harder. They feel harder. They, you just don't have the energy. You don't have the motivation. You just, everything just feels like heavy and hard and like slow, like you're moving through sludge. Totally normal. Do what feels good. Do a light yoga practice. Just do a couple sun salutations. Go for a walk. Focus on stretching. Focus on mobility. Do your normal workout, but take your weights down by half and really work on your form. Or like take a rest day and focus on getting a really good night's sleep and maybe some self-care in the morning. But I think that's a wonderful plan for week one of your Whole30 if you notice that your energy is flagging and things just feel a little bit harder than they have in the past. All right, let's get back to day by day. We're almost done with day three. One of the things that I ask you to do for extra credit is just if you are feeling like a little overwhelmed or a little cranky, just look at other areas of your life as well that might be contributing. This is a really good place to think about your boundary practice. So I think of boundaries as like the support for every single healthy habit. All of your health and wellness initiatives are supported by healthy boundaries. And if you want to focus on your Whole30 more, you may need to carve out more time, energy, mental capacity, physical space to do that. So think about other areas of your life, work, relationships, friendships, maybe it's boundaries with yourself. Like I'm gonna charge my phone out of the bedroom so that I can sleep better at night and I'm not picking up my phone first thing in the morning, which means my morning routine has a 100% better chance of getting done. But think about where you might be able or need to set boundaries in other areas. Maybe it's saying no to the friend who's like asking you to do the thing that you don't really have time or energy to do and you'd want to be nice, but you could only show up resentfully if you did it. Maybe you practice saying no. Maybe it is strengthening your boundary muscles around food and drink. So you have scripts to say, you know, you're using the book of boundaries, food and drink chapter so that when you do go out for happy hour, you feel perfectly prepared and you know exactly what you're going to say if someone pressures you to have just one. Maybe it's telling your boss or your office at work, please don't text me after hours unless it's an emergency. That's my family time. That's my meal prep time. Like that's my time. And I'm not going to be responding to work texts outside of normal working hours unless it's an emergency. I have scripts for all of this in the book of boundaries, but I think this would be a really great time to think about where boundaries could support your Whole30 journey and think about setting and holding the boundaries that you need to really be able to focus on this one thing that I'm asking you to focus on, and that is your Whole30. So maybe that's the lesson that we take with us today. Where could you incorporate boundaries to buy you a little more space, time, energy, and capacity to focus a little bit more on your Whole30 journey. I think that's a wrap for us for day three of the Whole30 YouTube Live series. I want to thank everybody again for joining today. This has been a really great conversation. We've been able to take these convos in some really wonderful directions that I think you, anyone, would find helpful on any day of their Whole30. Yesterday, we talked about asking yourself, why am I so successful with this Whole30? Today, we're focusing on boundaries. 
I am leaving you with a little homework assignment. Think about where you can set boundaries in your life and whether you're reading the book or listening to it on Audible. I'm so glad I did read it myself and I loved reading it. Or maybe you're reading the ebook and you're highlighting like crazy and you're ebook reader. But think about boundaries, where you can set them that would buy you a little more capacity to focus on your Whole30 more and get even more bang for your Whole30 buck. Thank you so much for joining me. This was super fun. I will see you same time. Same place tomorrow, right here on YouTube. Uh, make sure before you leave to subscribe to the Whole30 YouTube channel if you're not already. Thank you so much. And then this is what I have been told by my husband, who is the YouTube expert. Liking these videos is huge. When you click that little thumbs up button, it tells YouTube to show this video to other people who are interested in the Whole30. So please, before you leave, press that like button share the video maybe to your social media channel, your story with other people who you think would be interested in doing this. And thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for everything. I will see you over on Instagram and then back here at this time tomorrow. Have a good day three, everyone.